share my screen. So uh, last time we started with uh, some programs that are uh, used or some tools that are used for uh, archiving and compressing uh, files and uh, we used TAR and we will continue with TAR and uh, we'll see some uh, other cases uh, where TAR is used and also some other programs like zip and uh, rsync. Uh, so Last time we created a test uh, directory in order to test uh, tar and inside each directory we have uh, some empty files uh, named from from a to z <coughs> and uh, we have uh, have used tar uh, to create this uh, archive uh, test test build dot tar uh, now, so let, let's create it again. Uh, we use the option C for uh, create and uh, F for file, which is the file that we are going to use for the archive, the file name. And then the directory that we are going to archive, which is test test beer. So it is uh, just created uh, right now, and uh, we 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 said that we can uh, combine these two options uh, like C and F together. And also we can uh, re remove the leading dash uh, because tar is an old uh, tool. Uh, it also recognizes these, uh, it can also be used in this form, which is not uh, standard for Linux. In the standard form, we would use it like this, but with tar, we can also use it uh, like this. And uh, instead of uh, C, we can use the option uh, P. Uh, P is in order to show to show the table uh, to show the table uh, of uh, the table of contents of uh, an archive and so uh, it is going to list the files uh, or uh, it will display a list of files that are inside the archive and uh, if uh, we add the option v uh, this means they're both then we will get details, uh, some details for, for each file, uh, which are the same as uh, long listing, LSL, with option L. And uh, I also mentioned last time that uh, the order of uh, these options is important because this F is, uh, of, uh, is always uh, related to, to the file. And so uh, it, it should be the last one uh, in the list of options. Uh, if uh, we make it like this, for example, uh, it will give uh, a, a wrong, uh, it, it will get a wrong meaning, it, it will display uh, an error. So uh, it is the same. So oh, uh, in this case, uh, it works. Okay. It works. In this case, it works. Uh, but uh, when we uh, create the file, uh, the order, I think the order matters and uh, the F has to be just before the file or, or the, last, the last option in the, in the list of options. And uh, now, what else? And uh, the command tar by default removes the leading uh, slash from absolute fil file names. If we create uh, an archive, uh, with absolute file name, for example, tar cf. Uh, and then
So this PWD will print the current working directory and uh, we append here the test dir. And so uh, we are giving uh, the name of the directory that is going to be archived uh, as an absolute uh, path. And uh, it also gives a message star removing leading uh, slash from uh, member names. And uh, also if, uh, if we check with uh, T, we will see that uh, the, files, uh, the files that are archived do not uh, have uh, the leading slash uh, in, front, in front of the file name. And uh, if uh, we want to extract the, this archive, X is for extracting and F is for the file name and we can also add the option V for verbose. We see that it replicates it replicates uh, the structure. The structure of uh, directories because it, it, it extracts all the files with their uh, full name, but not uh, with absolute uh, uh, path. It is still a relative path. Instead of extracting all the files from the archive, we can extract only some files uh, from it. And we have to name or to list the files that are going to be extracted. Let's clean up. XF, and then uh, let's find a file that is inside it, for example, uh, test dir, dir 01, file A, for example. So we, we see that it has extracted only the file that we are listing uh, here. If uh, we did not give this option or this argument, then uh, this command would extract all the files inside the archive. But if we give some uh, arguments, then only these files will be extracted. Let's Let's try it again, but this time uh, we are giving three arguments. So this is going to be expanded by uh, by the shell, and uh, the shell will convert this to three uh, arguments actually. So uh, it only extracts the specified files. And we can also uh, use the option will cards. And uh, with uh, this, with this option, uh, we can we can use some uh, uh, will cards in in the in the name of the file that is going to be extracted. For example.
and again the same archive file but we use the option will cards and uh, then we specify the file name like this Now, this is not a shell will card because uh, we are uh, enclosing the argument with a single quotes and single quotes uh, disable the shell expansion inside inside the this uh, string. So the argument that uh, a star gets is this one with uh, with a star, but because uh, it has uh, the option will cards, then it will still interpret it uh, as a will card. And it has extracted all the all the matching files. Now, uh, why this is not the same as a shell uh, as a shell, shell expansion? Because shell expansion works only the files in the current uh, directory, in the files that already exist uh, in the working directory. Uh, if they don't do not exist, then there is nothing to be uh, to be replaced. Uh, this uh, star cannot be replaced with anything. Uh, for example, let's let's clean up this uh, test directly, and uh, I, uh, the same command but uh, using shell expansion without will cards. So uh, this command now, uh, this cannot be expanded to anything because there are no files in the current directory because shell ex expansion works by uh, replacing uh, this with existing files. And so uh, this is not, uh, this is not going to be replaced by anything and uh, this will be passed directly to UTAR, but there is no file like this in, in the archive. Sometimes, sometimes it is uh, useful to combine uh, tar with uh, the commands find and uh, gzip. For example, we are uh, searching with the command find in the test dir. Uh, and we are searching the files that uh, have a name file A and also close it with single quotes and it will find all these files and uh, now we can send this output to the command uh, or we can we can use the exec uh, operator of uh, the command find and uh, we can use the command tar rf and here is the name of the archive We, we have this uh, archive file uh, test three. Let, let's see what is inside. So, all the, find, uh, the files that are found by the command uh, find are stored inside this archive. But uh, how does it work? This R option uh, is used to append files to an existing directory. And so this command uh, works like this. Uh, for each file that uh, the, the command find, uh, finds, uh, it will execute 
this command and uh, here it will replace the file uh, the file name here and so the first time that it will be executed this command will create the archive and the archive will contain on, uh, only the first file the second time it will uh, append uh, the file to the archive the third time it will append the file to the archive so this option r is for adding files or appending files to the archive so uh, this command works by executing uh, this star command uh, for each file that is found Let's, let's try another uh, another way of uh, combining combining find find the command find and uh, and tar and also some some other commands. So we are finding all the files and then we are sending this output to the command. Now we we have a tar command here. Uh, this option uh, dash t capital T uh, takes a file with uh, the names of the files that are going to be archived. So uh, here normal normally here should come a file that uh, contains all the files that are going to be archived, the names of the files, uh, one one per line. But uh, in our case, uh, we are using dash, and dash means that uh, it is going to read the names of the files from the standard input. And the standard input comes uh, from the command uh, find. So uh, the output of the command find uh, will be used as, uh, as the input for the command tar. And each line will be the a name of the file that should be archived. And now create, creates an archive, and uh, F, here normally should come the the name of the file uh, of the archive file, but uh, if uh, we use instead dash, uh, it will uh, send the output to the standard output. So the output of the command tar will not be saved on the file, but will will be sent to the standard uh, output. And uh, from the standard output with pipe, we send it to the command zip, and the uh, zip will uh, compress it and store it to to this file. Uh, sorry, uh, I have to redirect the output. So the command dzip uh, will compress it and will send it to the standard output. And then from the standard output, we will uh, store it to the file uh, testdir.tgz. It is uh, this one here, and so it is uh, smaller than than the normal uh, archive file because it is compressed. But uh, actually, this is uh, uh, not needed. Uh, this kind of long uh, command with five lines, uh, chaining commands, because uh, the command uh, the command tar has uh, an option. Uh, of itself for for compressing files, and uh, we can add the option Z in order to compress the the archive. And uh, so this command here we place we place the name of the compressed archive, and uh, we don't we don't need this pipe. So. Again, we are reading the names of the files from the standard output. Uh, from, from, from the standard input. And uh, we are creating a, uh, an archive and also compressing it with uh, gzip. So 
it is uh, it is exactly the same even the sign is the same because the same uh, compression uh, method is used uh, the same compression library and uh, the same that we use for for this zip we can use the option j uh, which is used for the bzip2 uh, compression library and let's call it so uh, this option this option j uh, is uh, instead of compressing with uh, bzip2 which uh, usually provides a better compression So with uh, gzip, we have this size, and uh, with uh, gzip2, it, it is compressed a little bit more. And uh, to uncompress, to uncompress a compressed uh, archive, uh, we again add the option z, but when uncompressing it, for example. for uh, uncompressing and then z in, uh, in order to unzip it first and then the file uh, that is going to be uncompressed and uh, the same thing for uncompressing the uh, bzip to compressed archive But instead of Z, we use J. Uh, no. So, so far, uh, I've moved inside this directory full and then uh, do the uncompressed uh, of the archive inside it and then uh, it, it is relative the un uncompressed directory is related uh, to this directory but uh, the option the command tar also has an option to do this uh, change of directory before starting the un uncompressed uh, So this option capital C means uh, change directory before uh, uncompressing. Uh, it is the same as going to, to this directory first and then uh, doing the uncompression. Uh, directory does not exist. So it uh, it switches first uh, to this directory and then runs the uh, uncompression inside it. And uh, the same can uh, be used also for uh, for compressing a directory. Uh, we can use the option C in order to switch inside that uh, directory. Uh, 
first and then to perform the compression. Uh, for example, yeah. I go in, inside the directory full first, and then uh, the directory that is going to be uh, archived is a test deer. So it has switched to first, first inside the directory and then uh, has done the compression. Now, uh, there is another program which is not as frequently used as uh, tar for creating archives and compressed uh, archives. It is a zip, but it is uh, uh, mostly used to uncompressed files that are compressed in other operating systems, for, for example, for example uh, in Windows. Uh, this command, command uh, or this tool is more common in uh, Windows and uh, to uncompress those uh, archives, uh, we can, in Linux, we can, we can use uh, zip. Uh, for example, uh, to create an archive, uh, we use the option R, which means recursive, uh, and then the name of the archive. Then uh, the directory that is going to be archived. It has created a Uh, zip archive, but uh, actually the the way that this command works is by uh, by compressing each file. So it takes one file, it compresses it, and then it stores it. And uh, here we see that uh, it has done zero zero percent compression, no compression at all. Why? Because it is an empty file, and there is nothing to compress in it. The the way that uh, tar and gzip works is that tar creates a, a single file and then gzip compresses uh, this file. Uh, and uh, the way that zip works is that uh, it takes each file, it compresses each file uh, individually and then stores the compressed file into the archive. Let's uncompress uh, the zip archive that we created. To uncompress it, we use uh, unzip. And another command that is uh, used for backup and restore is R R sync, and this R stands for remote remote synchronization, or maybe recursive recursive synchronization. Uh, it does both both of them, recursive and remote, and it also has uh, some uh, nice features, uh, which make the the transfer efficient. Uh, let, let's try a simple command. The options A and B. B is for verbose, and A is like kind of uh, archive. Uh, 
and we see that uh, it has uh, sent uh, these bytes and, and so on. And it has actually replicated the directory. But uh, what happens if we try the same command again? We see that uh, it sends files incrementally. So uh, it checks what file, uh, what files have been changed, uh, or what are the differences between the two uh, directories, and sends only the differences. And in this case, nothing has been changed, and so uh, nothing uh, is sent. So it, it does it uh, efficiently. But uh, suppose that we change uh, a file in the original or in the source directory. For example, I will change it with touch. And the uh, touch will change uh, the modification time of the file. And now we try again this command. And we see that only this file has been uh, has been sent, only the modified file, the file that is uh, different uh, between the source and the target. And rsync can also uh, get an option delete. This means that uh, if there are some files that uh, are not on the source but are on the destination, then they will be deleted from the destination. So uh, this option makes sure that uh, both of these directories are identical. Not only copies all, all the files that are here to the destination directory, but also deletes any files that uh, are not here, but are here, are on the destination. So this will make sure that uh, both files are exactly uh, identical. And uh, in, in this case, there are no uh, files to be deleted, but uh, let's say that we remove a file. For example, let's remove this file. And try again. And so we see the message that uh, it, it, is, it is deleting this, this file from the destination directory. And this uh, V is just for where was. If, if we don't uh, use this option V, then no uh, messages are displayed. Now we will move to some uh, commands about uh, networking. Uh, very simple command is IP. Uh, it has a, a complicated uh, syntax, uh, but uh, the commands that are used are, are simple. For example, IP address uh, shows the, the interfaces and uh, their addresses. For example, this Ethernet 0 is this address. And there is also the loopback address, which has this, uh, uh, the loopback interface, which has this address. And this command can also be uh, shortened. So for example, IP other, as long as this, uh, this is a unique command um, among all the commands of the IP, uh, it will uh, recognize it correctly. Even this one is the same. And this shows all the interfaces, but uh, if we say, for example, then it will show only, uh, only one interface. It will show the address of only one interface or so only this one 
the command for roots is IP route. And again, this can also be uh, used in a short form as long as uh, it is unique. Uh, it can be recognized by the command IP. And, uh, so this is the default root. And th this is another root uh, for the local network. Another, another uh, network command is ping. For example, ping Uh, sends a packet and uh, receives an, a reply and we have to stop it with control C or we can add an option count count three it will send only three packets or, or we will we'll ping only three times another uh, command that can be useful sometimes is dig Dig is used to get the IP or uh, more general, the DNS records. For example, uh, dig so it shows DNS records and actually it shows the, the address for this uh, domain name. And uh, a more compact output so it, it, it has a strange syntax for options we use plus uh, instead of dash or minus that is used usually uh, it shows uh, only the IP Let's try another command. So it shows the, the path that the network traffic is uh, taking uh, in order to reach this uh, server or this this host uh, or the path or the root. There, there is another similar command trace path. Almost the same output. There are two commands that are uh, that can be used or are used usually for downloading files, and this is uh, w w get or web get and let's try to uh, use them in some examples. Uh, So it has saved in this file. Uh, check it. This is a normal uh, HTML file. But uh, if uh, we want to save it with another name, then we can add the option with uh, big, big O output output index.html for example we don't we, we don't want it to save uh, it with the uh, the default name but uh, with another file name so uh, this this is a capital o for for output
let's try a similar command with uh, curl. I have not installed it, but um, it is almost the same as uh, wget, but uh, curl displays the output of the, the result of the, uh, saves the file, sends the file, the output to the standard output to the screen. And so we have to, to save it to a file by redirecting it or uh, using an option. Uh, let's see if we have netcat. Okay, we, we have netcat. Netcat is another uh, uh, nice tool uh, that can be used in several uh, cases, especially when we debug the uh, network connections. And uh, the the way that it works, uh, netcat l So uh, right now, this program is uh, listening to the port one, two, three, four. This L is for listen. And uh, let's let's open an, another tab. And we use the command netcat and then the server. And then the port. Now this is connected to this server to to this port, and whatever we type here, uh, it will be sent to to the other uh, command, and uh, it will be displayed uh, on the screen. So uh, we can use this to to test the network co connectivity uh, between two computers. And we see that it is displayed here. And it works the other way as well. So whatever is typed uh, to one of the commands is uh, displayed uh, to the other, to the other one. We, we can use this uh, command netcat to transfer a file, for example. And uh, we can do it like this. Here, uh, we are listening to a port, and then uh, the output are, uh, the output is redirected to a file. So whatever will be sent to this command will not be displayed on the screen, but will be uh, saved to the file. On the other end, uh, we use the command that sends the, the data, but uh, we'll read the data from a file. For example, and we we'll also uh, add a command for waiting, for example, for three seconds. And it is finished. Oh, I didn't start it. Uh, so let, let's start the program, uh, try it again. It's done here. So we see that uh, the file has been transferred. So this is uh, saving the output, uh, the standard output to, to a file, and this is uh, reading, the, reading the standard input from a file, from a file, and then uh, the file is transferred. And we can also uh, use some more complex uh, commands or combine it with other commands like tar, for example, to transfer a whole directory. Uh, 
So we will use, we will use star to compress the to uh, make an archive of the whole directory, and then star creates a file which is uh, transferred with NC, and then it is uh, saved to the other end, or maybe just uh, extract it on the fly without saving it at all. In this case, instead of saving to a file, uh, we send it to the pipe and uh, we use the command that will extract uh, the archive that, that will come from the pipe. So we are going to use the X and then let's assume that it will be a zipped archive and then V for the both or And uh, so this F minus will send it to the to the standard uh, output, not not to a file. So let's try this, and then on the other tab or the other the other terminal. We should create the archive. For example, we want to transfer this directory. We create the archive star. And also add the option B. For both. So we are creating the archive and we are uh, sending it to the standard output, not, not to a file. Uh, from the standard output, we send the archive to the command NC. And the port the part that we are using for uh, communication. The, the command tar needs also a directory, which is going to be uh, the archive. And we are compressing the current directory. Dot. I don't know. It, it seems that this time it works. And uh, actually, actually, we we are inside the food directory and the. Uh, uh, the, the files that are created by, by this command are in this one, test dir. And uh, so it has transferred the whole uh, test directory. Now, another important uh, tool that is used, uh, used for networking is um, SSH, uh, which is uh, usually used for secure uh, accessing of a, a server. To log into a remote server uh, securely. Uh, 
Uh, let, let's try to log into the server one. This server one is another uh, server which is identical to uh, Linux training with the same uh, usernames and accounts, with the same accounts and usernames. And so um, I, I will try, uh, I, I will use the same, uh, uh, the same password that I'm using to, to log into to Linux training. So uh, the user, it is, it is the same user. And I will use the, the same password. And now uh, I'm on the other server. Exit. I, I'm back on uh, Linux training. Instead of uh, logging into another uh, server, we can just execute remote command and exit. So it has executed, uh, it goes to the remote server, executes the given command, and then uh, exits. So the output of the command is this one, who am I, username, Dashamir and connection to server one clause. And if we want to use some uh, wheel cards, for example, to list all the hidden files, then we have to, uh, to enclose maybe, maybe the whole command, the whole command uh, in single quotes. So that uh, the expansion of this uh, wheel card does not happen on the local uh, computer, but this is sent. This command is sent as a whole to the remote server, and the expansion is done there. So this is the output of uh, of this command. Are all the hidden files that start with with a dot? Now, each time that uh, we use SSH, we are writing the password. And this, is, this becomes uh, quickly uh, tedious. Uh, a better way is to use keys. So we can generate a public and private key and store the public key on the remote server and use the private key to uh, access the remote server with SSH. And uh, to generate a key pair, we can use the command the command uh, SSH generate generate key. With option T, we can use uh, a type uh, of the key pair. For example, I'm using this, this type. And then Q is uh, for quiet, and N is for generating no, uh, for, using no password to encrypt the key because uh, usually it can also be encrypted. And uh, with uh, the option F, I give the file uh, where I'm going to save this, this key. So it has, it has generated this q1 and q1.pub, which is the, the public public uh, part of the key. Now, 
Now we need to send, to send the public part of the key to the remote server. And uh, we can use the command SSH copy ID. And uh, these public private key are called identity files. And uh, so this is the option, this option I is for identity. Uh, identity key is .ssh key1.pub. And I'm going to send it to the remote server to the account that I'm here. I'm going to copy it there. And I press enter. It requires the password. Number of keys edit one. Uh, now try to log into the machine uh, without password. Okay. Why it is not working? Uh, this should be the key that I just copied, but uh, let's remove this file and try again. So I removed this file and it has been just created, but it is not working. Maybe there, there is something in the configuration of the of the server. Uh, maybe I have forgotten to enable the key login because in the configuration of the SSH server, it has to be enabled that uh, you allow login with uh, uh, with identity files or pu public private keys. Uh, usually it should be enabled by default, but who knows? So I, I'm closing for uh, today and uh, we have some other, a few other examples that we will try on the next, uh, on, on the next week. We are going to finish this uh, example with SSH. I will see uh, why it is not working, what, what is wrong, and we'll do it again. We'll repeat it. And then uh, I'm thinking for the next uh, week to, uh, to do a session about uh, Beam and Emacs. Uh, before starting with, uh, uh, with scripting. Now, let me check if there are any questions. Or if you, you if you have any questions, you can ask. Uh, Diego is asking, no need for slash uh, uh, semicolon. Uh, yes, uh, 
actually uh, I, I was uh, adding uh, this one uh, at the end and apparently it is uh, the same as uh, this one uh, or, or, or this one so it seems that it is not uh, or, or maybe it is similar or exactly the same I'm not sure but uh, the example uh, contains this this one at the end uh, which plays the role of separator or end of command or something something like this May I reach uh, server one from my uh, from my bash from home in Bozen? No, it is not possible to reach it from uh, your home because uh, server one is uh, in in a virtual network in the same network as uh, Linux training. Uh, but uh, you, we can reach Linux training because we are using Guacamole and Guacamole has a configuration that uh, allows us to access uh, Linux training, but it does not have a configuration to for uh, accessing several ones. So uh, let, let me try to to make to make a simple diagram. So uh, th there is a virtual network inside uh, Docker, and uh, here there is Linux training, which is a virtual machine uh, inside Docker connected to this virtual network. And there, there is also server one, which is again a virtual machine, and actually it is identical to Linux training. So this is server one. And uh, there is also another virtual machine with uh, guacamole in in Docker, and it is also connected to this uh, virtual network. And uh, somehow we can access guacamole from the web interface. And uh, the, the guacamole has the configuration to that allows us to uh, to access the Linux thing, but uh, we cannot use guacamole to access. Uh, server one and also uh, uh, so it is not possible to access it directly because it, it has no no port uh, no open port to be accessed from the outside and Linux training also does not have an open port uh, from the outside so it can be only accessed from uh, guacamole if uh, we want we can open a port an SSH port can forward an SSH port for example uh, 220 one or uh, 22 zero two. Uh, so if uh, we want we can forward this port to the port 22 of this server so that it, it can be accessed uh, from a terminal for example uh, the normal way but uh, the configuration of this server is not like this it does not have an open port it can be accessed only through guacamole but from Linux training uh, we can access uh, the server one because they are in the same uh, network in the same virtual network what to do for open uh, to ssh connection on a pc uh, maybe i explained your question i'm not sure if i ex uh, explained your, your question Okay, and and that's the thing that I'm using. So, if, if there are any questions, if there are no questions, then we are closing it, and I'll see you next time at uh, 19, starting at, at 19.